Ever been in this situation? You import a model into Unity and see this, an insane number of material slots. Let's fix this. This video assumes you have a basic knowledge of Blender 2.8 and above. Before starting this tutorial, please set up your model's materials within Blender. Also, please make a backup of your Blender project before starting this. Keep in mind that certain steps will differ for special use cases. A section at the end of the video will be reserved for dealing with special use cases and debugging. Let's start by combining our meshes together. While in object mode, shift select our model's meshes and combine them using Ctrl J. Next, we want to remove any unnecessary leftover UV maps. Hover over your object data properties and select it. Now, open up your UV map dropdown and select and remove all other UV maps other than the current active render. If needed, rename your remaining UV map UV map by double clicking on it. In our material properties, let's click on our material specials button and select remove unused material slots. This will remove all materials that are not currently being used by our model. Now we're going to return to our object data and create a new UV map. We can do this by clicking the plus button. Let's name it Baked. Now, let's select our Baked UV map while keeping our original UV map as our active render. For the next steps, we will need to be in Blender's UV Editing Workspace, which is located on the top bar of Blender. Once we are in the UV Editing Workspace, let's toggle on UV Sync Selection. While we are at it, let's open our material properties back up in preparation for the next step. Now, you are probably thinking, wow, this is too much for me. I get that, but trust me, it's not as bad as it looks. For this step, we will be selecting, moving, and organizing our model's UV islands outside of the UV map boundary. Let's try to organize them depending on their location on the mesh, but don't worry too much about it. Make sure to not have any overlapping UV islands. Now, in our material properties, select the first material of our model and click the select button, which will highlight slash select the UV island corresponding to it. We want to move these islands outside of the UV map boundary, which is the box we see before us. Let's use our mouse to move these islands to our desired location. Once this is completed, we will need to do the exact same step with every material in our model. Remember to avoid UV island overlap. In certain cases, such as hair, your UV islands will be overlapped. This is fine, do not worry about it. Use the following selection tools to reselect your islands if necessary. L for link selection, B for box selection, and C for circular selection. I recommend pausing the video here until all of your UV islands are organized outside of your UV boundary. For this step, we will need to understand the correspondence between UV island scale and texture quality. For example, a texture that is only base colors will not need a large UV island, while high detail textures such as faces and their logos will generally require larger islands. Try to do your best in guessing what would be best for your model. This step requires quite a lot of trial and error, so don't feel pressured to get it perfect right off the bat. Before we start, it is a good idea to be in face selection mode, which is located on the top left hand corner next to the UV sync selection button. Let's start by box selecting the face of our model. and fitting it into the UV map boundary. Use S to scale it and R to rotate. If you have any overlapping islands, like I do in this case, we can easily select them by hovering over the islands and clicking L on our keyboard. You can also easily flip your selected island by right-clicking and selecting Mirror and then D. 
the axis that you want to flip, either X or Y. Now comes the most important part of our process, packing our UV islands. Let's scale our UV islands depending on the importance and amount of detail. Try to leave at least a 10 pixel distance between islands for padding reasons. Let's try not to rush this process. This will definitely take us the most amount of time compared to the rest of the steps. There isn't one specific in or right way to set up your UV map. In the end, it just needs to work. Don't worry about it looking pretty. I highly recommend pausing the video here until you've finished packing all your UV islands into your UV boundary. At this point, your UV map should look something like this. Before doing anything else, let's save our project and then create a backup of our project. Let's save as and create a new file. For the following steps, we will need to be in the shading workspace. Let's make sure that we have our material properties open and our first material selected. If you set up your material using cats, then your nodes should be set up in this manner. Let's select our texture node, copy it, then paste it. Move it out of the way and remove the current assigned texture. Now create a new texture, name it Atlas and set the resolution to 2048 by 2048. Then press OK. Now copy this node and paste it into every material in your model. Make sure you have the node selected in every single one of your material slots. With our new texture node selected, let's move over to our render properties. Let's set up our baking settings as the following. Render engine, cycles. Device, GPU compute. Bake type, diffuse. Influence slash contributions, color. And then our output should be image texture and the margin should be around 10 pixels. Now press the bake button. Once the baking is done, our atlas should pop up. Next, what we need to do is save it. To do so, let's switch over to our UV editing workspace. Now browse our images and switch to our created atlas. Next, click the image button and save as. Now it's finally time to test our atlas. While in object mode, let's select our body mesh and duplicate it using Shift D. Immediately right click to cancel any movement. Then turn off our original body mesh. Now with the duplicate body mesh selected, let's create a new material and name it Atlas. Now add the atlas texture we created to this material. Now switch over to edit mode. Press A to select our entire model and click assign in the material properties. Let's switch over to our object data properties and set our baked UV map as our active renderer. 
let's also turn the reflect value on our material to one. Now let's switch over to object mode and inspect our model. If everything looks all right, we can apply these steps onto our main body mesh. Though, if you see any strange artifacting or low resolution textures, then delete your body mesh and scale the affected UV islands up and rebake your textures. This will be covered at the end of the video in the debugging section. Now, once again, let's go to object mode, select our body mesh and create a new material, name it Atlas. Add the Atlas we created to this material. Switch over to edit mode, press A, select our entire model and click assign in the material properties. Next, we want to switch over to our object data properties and set our baked UV map as our render. Now, let's remove our original UV map and rename our baked UV map to UV map. Let's also turn the reflect value on our material to one. While in object mode, let's remove all our unused material slots by clicking the material specials button and removing all unused materials. Finally, we are done. Congratulations, you have optimized your model into one material. Now, all we need to do is export our model back into Unity. In object mode, shift select our armature and mesh. Now let's File, Export, FBX. Now for the Export Settings, tick Selected Objects, Apply Transforms, tick Open the Armature tab, and untick Add Leaf Bones. Now simply export your model into your Unity folder. Now with our new model imported into Unity, all we need to do is place it into our hierarchy and assign our new material onto it. This can be easily done by clicking onto the body of our model and opening the materials dropdown in the inspector and slapping our new material in there. That's it. We did it. We will now cover some common situations and how to deal with them. These situations are your textures looking compressed, how to set up materials for multiple shader use, materials using colors instead of and or with textures, and finally, transferring dynamic bone data from one model to another. This issue usually occurs when baking. The cause is your UV islands are too small, the solution is to scale up your UV islands and rebake. If we notice any texture resolution issues when testing our atlas, such as these, we know that we have issues with the scale of some of our UV islands. Let's delete our duplicated body mesh and turn our main body mesh back on. Next, we will need to locate the affected UV island. To do so, we will need to be in our UV editing workspace. An easy way to locate these islands is by C-selecting the part of the mesh that is being affected. As you select the faces of the affected area, pay attention to your UV islands on the left. Soon it will become pretty obvious as to which island this area is assigned to. Once the island is located, we will want to fully select it and scale it up as much as possible. We may also want to move, scale, and or rotate the surrounding islands in order to make more space. If necessary, you can easily deselect any selected faces by holding shift while in C selection mode. Now that we have scaled our islands up, we can rebake our atlas. Let's move over to the shading workspace and rebake our atlas. If everything went right, our atlas texture should have updated to the new UV island setup. To verify this, let's move back to the UV editing workspace. Now let's save our updated texture using the Alt S hotkey. Now all we need to do is test our newly updated Atlas.
This can be a decently complex setup in some cases. For the sake of this video, we will only be covering the most common scenario when this method is needed. For more complex cases, a separate dedicated video will be necessary. First, let's locate and group all meshes that use the same shader, in our case, a metallic shader. I already know which meshes are affected. In this model's case, it's the teeth, chain, and part of the belt. In edit mode, simply select the materials and click the select button. Now with all meshes selected, press P and click Selection. Now while in object mode, let's remove unused material slots on both of our meshes. With our new mesh, let's create a new material and name it accordingly. In edit mode, select the whole mesh and assign it to the new material. Let's organize our UVs a bit. Their location does not matter in this case. Now, go through the process of baking your atlas on your main body. Once that is finished, merge your meshes together and export into Unity. In some cases, materials in Unity will be influenced by a color value or be a color value. This creates issues when attempting to create an atlas for your model. For this, you will need to launch your favorite photo editor, Photoshop in my case. For a texture influenced by color, open up the texture in your photo editor of choice. Add a new layer above our current one. Back in Unity, let's locate and copy the hex value of the influencing color and fill our new layer with that color. Now set this layer to multiply and save this as a new image. Use this new texture on the material in question. Material is only a color. This is pretty basic. Create a new image with a 2048 by 2048 resolution. In Unity, locate the hex value of the color and fill a layer with that color. Now save this as a new image and use it as your texture. This step is simple with the use of Ruri's pumpkin tools. Use the link in the description to download the newest Unity package file and import it into your Unity project. Now simply open up the newly added pumpkin menu, then tools, then avatar tools. Now snap it next to your inspector. Next assign your model as the avatar. Open up copy components and place your old model into copy from. Untick everything but dynamic bones and dynamic bone colliders. Finally, click copy selected.